It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out of the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Friday before Christmas. Here we are, my friends. The tyrants were stirring. Even Janet Napolitano, Janet Reno. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. Friday, the 23rd day of December 2011. And uh, we have just continued ongoing uh, reports of the big mega banks basically gang raping this country's financial future as they also suck Europe dry. We have a truly disgusting group of reports here at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com that need to be seen by millions. TSA responsible for over nine thousand unannounced checkpoints last year and paul watson has links to reports and photos of them with machine guns you pull up and there's tsa run viper teams and they've got machine guns and dogs barking at little kids and they drag you out of your car i mean you want to live in north korea baby this is it borders wide open wow and uh, here's the other headline, Congress to fund massive expansion of TSA checkpoints. They're coming to a town near you. And I've seen the video of these around the country. You pull up, they got local cops under them, just shaking with hate of the public, just shaking. <sighs> and they got their little, in Tennessee, little Marine Corps hats on, the state police. <sighs> I mean, yeah. You work for criminal mega banks that ship drugs in and kidnap little kids and run white slavery worldwide on record and are imploding this country and shipping guns into Mexico. And they've got dumbed down, psychically obese, morons posing as federal officers sticking their hands down people's pants everywhere and when you don't like the tsa grabbing your genitals or sticking their hands down your baby's diaper and fondling them or robbing your bags or hitting on your wife i got some new horrors today where they take chocolate cakes out of people's bags and eat them and then laugh about it i mean it's reached la la land levels and yesterday, I had another police officer who was in major magazines on TV, admittedly the second person to respond to the Oklahoma City bombing, Mr. Browning, Don Browning. And he's, he's sitting there talking about in the police headquarters a week after it, FBI agents walking up and saying, we'll kill you and your wife if you investigate what we're doing. And... He's told over the years, national news this. You know why one reason this film got made is one of the camera guys in Oklahoma, because national media will hire the local videographer, had been there on the History Channel, Discovery Channel, ABC News pieces, seeing all these witnesses say this, and it never being put on national news. I mean, that's how criminal this government is. And they didn't just threaten cops, they killed some of them. And the local police all stood down. You pull up, they, they, they've killed the cop and tortured him on federal property so they can take control of the investigation. And they don't even try to send police to look into it. All this stuff about how the government loves the troops and loves the police. And let me tell you something, you are dirt to the criminals that run this system. And remember that. All the pageantry and in Houston a few years ago, they shut down major highways and had thousands of police from all over the state there for a police dog that got shot. That's all to make you think they care about you. That's all to make you think the gang you're a member of 
is going to be there for you. It's the opposite. They'll murder you with pleasure and then murder your wife if you don't like it. Okay? That's who runs this country. Total evil. Stay with us. All right, my friends, we are going to be here live for the next three hours. It is December 23rd, 2011, on this Friday edition. And we have defense con, well, not even contractor, civil servant, Navy veteran who works uh, in classified areas of the Department of Defense, who has been pointing out to us uh, sensitive but public documents that are on the federal government's bid process website with the whole Homeland Security seal on it. And he'll be joining us coming up in about an hour and a half here on the radio broadcast to help go through these documents and decipher them dealing with the FEMA camps. Now, since he pointed out these documents to us, uh, within about an hour and a half of us linking to them two days ago, uh, back on uh, Wednesday evening, it was removed. And they put a cryptic message up there about this could be classified. Now, it was marked sensitive, but it's a public purchase. And so what government's done is it's tried to make more and more stuff classified. In fact, I've seen reports that millions of news articles have been classified by the CIA. That means in their clandestine research laboratories and analysis laboratories, they don't want other uh, members of the agencies even reading the news. So this is an attempt to basically have the national security state swallow up society. And then we're basically all insecure because those that, quote, are guarding everything just decide to take over the society. It's the same story we've seen in civilization over and over and over again in the 6,000 years of recorded history. Okay. I do want to get to your phone calls uh, a little bit earlier in this hour than I usually do, but I want listeners to have your point, to have your question ready. I'm going to attempt this again, and I've never achieved it, but I've gotten close. One minute each caller, 15-second response. I want to give you a chance, because I love hearing from you, to bring up news issues, things we haven't covered, questions, comments, you name it. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. You can go ahead and load the phones up right now on any issue uh, that you uh, wish to discuss or any of the issues that I am about to go over here today. But uh, here's an interesting article that I meant to get to yesterday, so I'm going to cover it now out of the gates before I get into all the top stories. EU carbon tax, court upholds carbon trade plan for aviation. And it goes on to say Europe is uh, adopting this massive uh, surcharge that is to be added to all people flying in or out of Europe. This affects Asia, this affects North America, and will basically force the adoption here because these are international airlines, many of them based or part of their system based in the United States. So it's the mega corporations just going along with it, um, taxing carbon dioxide that plants breathe. And so uh, there you have it. And the Financial Times of London has a report here. China warns EU of carbon tax trade war. China has warned the European Union to abandon its controversial carbon tax on airlines or risk provoking a global trade war. Adding weight to the warning, an industry insider told the Financial Times that the Chinese government was seriously considering measures to hit back at the EU if it insists on charging international airlines. That means you come in there, you pay them for their carbon emissions. Remember, China will not implement this. We implement, we're shutting down. I mean, as if we can't compete with a slave labor on top of it or dumping toxic waste right in the rivers, and then we have more and more regulations here, they have no workers' comp, no Social Security, nothing. I mean, Mao Zedong set that up with the globalist. Back in the uh, 60s, they'd made, well, they made deals in the late 40s, but, but the deals became codified in the 60s and 70s. This is all going on. And China says, we're just going to be exempt from that. Adding weight to the warning, an industry insider told the Financial Times that the Chinese government was seriously considering measures to hit back at the EU if it insists on charging international airlines for their carbon emissions. In a case initiated by U.S. Airlines, the European Court of Justice ruled Wednesday that the EU's carbon emission trading scheme did not infringe on the sovereignty of other nations, and that it was 
compatible with international law. It's a tariff, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, where are they paid? To the big mega banks, the big six. It was uh, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Al Gore, Bill Clinton, and Ken Lay on record who created the carbon tax scheme in meetings in 1995. <laughs> There's no end to what these crooks demand. Okay, continuing here. Before I go to the calls, though, I've got to tell a story about uh, tell them, you know, asking my wife. I said, listen, we don't really have any cash. We've got some gold and silver. You need to get out of our savings some cash. But it wasn't even above the $10,000 amount. Uh, and the banks were calling me frantically yesterday. They, they balked at you know, giving her money. And before she's pulled out even just a few thousand and they've act all freak out. And I'm trying to use a local bank, you know, that's 100% in, in Texas. And um, I mean, you would think, I mean, uh, look, all of America is a giant prison now. I told the story where I went into the YMCA in a rural area where I live outside Austin. And I, and I walk up and there's nobody around and I get a tour and I say, okay, well, I want to go ahead and sign up for a family. And they said, well, you ought to wait, you know, being, quote, nice to after uh, Christmas because you'll get a discount. No sign-up fee. And I said, uh, okay. I said, well, can I go ahead and just pay to work out today? And they said, oh, there's a three, you know, time, uh, you know, free trial. Just, just give us your driver's license. So I went up to the car, got my driver's license. So I'm going to work out with it. And I uh, you know, came back in and she looks at it and she says, she says, this is in Austin. Do you live here? And I said, yeah, Austin's like city limits five miles away. I, I, but you haven't changed this yet. That's illegal. And I was going, well, what are you worried about it for? I mean, I'm just here to lift weights, man. This isn't a stinking airport. I mean, it, 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 look, they take petty people and they get off on this minder deal. And I've seen it, again, when they're literally carting 75, 80-year-old women buying beer or old men buying a bottle of wine at the grocery store. And I'll watch some zit-faced 17-year-old interrogate some person walking with a cane. And I just start shooting my mouth off. And they go, it's our policy to card everyone buying pipe tobacco or beer or wine. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you have to be mindless. You're not allowed to make your own determination. Oh, you look a little young. Let me see your card. It's this. It's totally sick. It's totally sick. I mean, this is the opposite of what freedom is. And so I'm on the phone. Might as well just tell the story now. They it starts while my ear starts ringing, 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 ringing yesterday at about one thirty, and 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 calls at home and and and, and emails. I later learned and oh oh my gosh, you, you know your and, and and so my wife comes in and she's got some checks to deposit, and it's our private checking account. And she wants to get some cash out, as we've been telling everybody that they should do, and all our experts agree, uh, because cash we pulled out a year ago, you know, we spent on odds and ends and things, and we're getting some more cash. And it's not even up to the level that they're supposed to, you know, quote, report you to financial crimes enforcement, who doesn't know where the billion, 200 million Corzine money went. Of course, they know exactly where it went. It went to... J.P. Morgan Chase in London, on record, but they don't know where it is. It's all completely tracked in lifetime, but they don't know. And, uh, and Corzine's been caught lying to Congress, but so what? He's not going to get in trouble. And so all of this is going on. You know, Wachovia, Wells Fargo, launder $376 billion in two years. Don't get in trouble. Government didn't know. You know. Running the aircraft that fly the cocaine, that all comes out. AP Reuters, nobody gets in trouble. Bloomberg as well. But here we are, you know, a couple thousand dollars out of the bank. A few thousand dollars out of the bank. And uh, she goes up and, and the woman starts lecturing her about new rules in the new year, about depositing and, 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 and endorsing checks. And so my wife's sitting there and she's, well, I've been here quite a few times, never been told this, but okay. And then the woman acts all nervous and kind of freaks out. They have to get permission and want to see all this ID when she gets some cash out. And so my wife goes through that and leaves, and they're calling up, sir, we forgot to ask your wife's occupation. We forgot to ask, you know, uh, who she is and all this other stuff. She got cash out. We've got to give it to the federal government for this report on you. So I call him up this morning, and the guy's all, ah, yes, uh, mm, the money, uh, we need to know about that. What is? And I'm like, well, it's a private checking account. You know, we put money out of our business account into there, 
and, and they're just, oh, we've got to ask this. It's, it's just the federal requirement. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It's Big Brother. And they're like, no, we're not spying on you, sir. No, no, no. We're familiar with your radio show. We, 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 we know what you talk about, but that isn't, we're not spying. See, they're not spying. When they are asking you questions and filling out reports on you, no, no. Guilty until proven innocent. No Fourth Amendment. No, 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 no. You know, the news 10 years ago when they put this through, they called it Big Brother, total takeover, Soviet-style control. But now it's not. Kind of like the TSA says, listen, we're going to go in your pants. But it's not groping. Like the strip searching all the old ladies. They said, we don't strip search. We call it a search. We just call it a security check. We're not strip searching. Yes, we take your clothes off, but it's not a strip search. And and we're going to fill out a suspicious crime report on you, but it's not spying. And you know what? The government's going to put fluoride in the water that gives you a seven-fold increase in bone cancer on record. But it's not poison. And it's not forced medicating. And we're going to raid Amish. Now every day I'm getting reports with SWAT teams for selling milk to their neighbors, which isn't even illegal. But that's not a police state. And you know what? The government's going to ship guns into Mexico and cocaine back in and get caught and not get in trouble. But that's not dangerous. And the FBI is going to threaten to kill cops. But that's okay. Well, let me expand on this. All over the United States. The hairs on your arm will stand But up. in Texas, we've gotten really famous That's for this on national news. Because they love to always make local police look bad. So the feds, who are even worse on average, can come in and take over. Uh, with their federal takeovers of your towns and cities. But they'll show police chiefs and, and judges going, That's right, if we pull you over... And you have even $500 in your wallet or purse. We're taking it as contraband. Under asset forfeiture seizure, no drugs or crimes needed. That's what the regs say. And they just, Anderson Cooper puts it on news, Mr. CIA, who tells you how great it is that our troops grow the opium in Afghanistan. And I, not, and I by no means am de defending the local police. And I, again, I've been pulled over in some of these small towns in East Texas and places where the cops have giant swastikas on their arms. I mean, you're like, what on earth is going on here? Uh, but the issue is, yes, I, as I told you last week, I was pulled over once as a teenager with a guy with a swastika on his forearm and a swastika on his arm, on the side of his arm. He was wearing short sleeves. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine being a minority pulled over by that guy? The point is, it's wild open season. But even the state police before, there was a famous case where an old woman had like $3,000 in her purse. And they just took it. What's this in your purse? Well, when I travel, Sonny, I carry enough money to fix my car, do whatever. I'm going to visit family in Kansas. And they said, no, you're not. We're taking the money. <laughs> and so you, you go to your bank account. I mean, what if I would have wanted all the money out of my bank account? You know, they never have a question, though, when you're depositing it, though. But you want some of it out. And all of this is about teaching you that you're a criminal. All of this is about teaching you to be spied on. And I try to explain it to these to the bank manager I was talking to this morning as I was haranguing the poor person. And he was saying, well, I'm just doing my job. Don't be paranoid. We're not spying on you. Oh, you're not spying on me. No, you just fill out financial crimes enforcement reports on me. Well, you know, don't, don't be afraid, sir. I'm not afraid of that. I'm afraid of what it means that you accept this like it's no big deal and the rest of society does. Well, I'm just doing my job. Yeah, I heard that before. And I'm like, don't you understand Corzine is allowed to run off with billions? Yeah, I know about that. Don't you, did you hear about Wachovia and Wells Fargo laundering hundreds of billions? Yeah, I heard about that. Oh, but, but a guy wanting to, you know, thousands of dollars out of the bank, that's, that's evil. And again, I understand that's just a minion at a bank. I get it. But when you walk up to any, under Patriot Act compliance, any hotel, any rental car, any place, period now, you see the people on the power trip in their little suits, and they start asking, where are you going? Oh, I'm here to visit my cousin, or I'm here for business. Oh, what business is that? And they're a script. And I go, hey, I understand this is Patriot Act, and they tell you you're a little 
secret agent now, and you have little seminars. They're like, oh, really, you do? You know, one woman's going, uh -huh, you're right, and I know where you really live. This isn't really your address on your driver's license, is it? No, I moved. That's right, you live here. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, you're on a power trip. And I go, the mega banks you love so much are going to suck you dry. You like the fact you're not doing as well as you were doing just five years ago? Because we're really a depression? You're going to be destroyed by the little petty system you like. Now, sir, I'm just trying to do my job. Yeah, you are just doing your job, aren't you? Just like that state police guy pulls me over, starts wanting to search my car, and I'm like, I don't run narcotics like your criminal bosses do. I'm not involved like the state government here working with DynCorp kidnapping kids or the state youth commission with the big rape rooms that came out with the judges and all the rest of them in there with the kids. I'm not involved in all that. And I looked at him and I said, this system's going to destroy you. And at the end he goes, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, Alex, I'll listen to the show. Well, then what have you been doing trying to ask me 20 questions and wanting to search my car for the last 15 minutes, buddy? This isn't a game. It isn't a joke. I'm so freaked out. It freaks me out to talk to cops off air over the years and then have them actually come on air now. And go, yeah, most of the department knows the feds did it. And we're finally getting the courage to go public. And, uh, and the FBI threatened to kill me and my wife. And you're just like... I mean, it's so real. Listen, cop. You know, they tell him, shut up about us in Oklahoma City or you and your wife are dead. And then they actually killed Oklahoma City cops. No one will stand up to these people. And so there's no end to what they're going to do to us. When we come back, they're announcing nationwide checkpoints where they're going to grope your wife in front of you. Okay, so I'm ranting here. The point is... You go to the YMCA, you go to Best Buy, you go to the bank, you go to the airport, you drive down the highway, you go anywhere, there's all these petty people who are told through their corporate models, because remember the mega corporations are owned by the big six banks on record, so are the big defense contractor companies, the whole military industrial complex Eisenhower warned us about. And the classical tyranny of Soviet Russia, Nazi Germany, all of it, is exactly what they're setting up today. There's no debating it. I mean, it is the bona fide deal. Like a 57 Chevy, you know what it looks like? Well, th th we know what tyranny looks like. You know what a duck looks like? It's, it's yellow, it's got a beak, it's got a little webbed feet, swims around, looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, gets in the river, gets in the pond, it's a duck. I mean, you know what a pit bull looks like. You know what Hitler looks like. I mean, you know what a Saturn V rocket looks like. I mean, there it is. Let's stop playing games. And what the cowards do is they just burrow more into it. They just give into it even more. And then they act like those of us that are sane that we got the problem. And so I want to explain something to the bank tellers. I want to explain something to the gun shop dealers and everybody else. Everybody wants to mislabel things so you think it's okay. I remember 16 years ago having a couple gun shops that had good guns and good prices on as sponsors when I was just on local radio. And they were making money hand over fist, and that's great because I believe in you know, making money in the free market and getting implements of liberty out there to the public. And I would get experts on there and talk about how Judge... Um, you know, judges at the Supreme Court had ruled that Sheriff Richard Mack was right, 10th Amendment violation, Brady Bill, violated states' rights, uh, and a bunch of other issues that you couldn't have a five-day waiting period. And that ruling had come down to the Supreme Court, and we were having Sheriff Richard Mack on. And the, both the sponsors called after I had him on a few times and said, stop saying we register guns. Now that we've gone to the next instant check, it's cutting back on sales, plus it's not a registration. And I said to the sponsors, I said, I, I said this is a registration. Your name, and you're buying a handgun, rifle, or shotgun, and then they know that, that it's on file, the serial number right there, but basically how many guns you've got and your address under penalty of perjury, that is registration as a gun owner, period. And I said, I'm sorry, I, I, I cannot shut up about this. And one of the sponsors left. 
And then later got so harassed by the government anyways, like other gun dealers, they went into a vitamin business and, and did quite well. But the point is, and the other one didn't like it but understood. But then I got calls from other gun dealers saying, don't do this, it's hurting business. Hey, you're going to lose the whole business and you're going to lose the Second Amendment that's a lot more important than your stinking business, pal. If we don't tell the truth, I am not going to shut up for a sponsor. I'm not going to shut up for anybody. I'm willing to die for the truth. You think I'm going to sell out for some money? But see, you sell out by lying to yourselves. Oh, we don't really register people. I've been in gun shops before uh, and uh, said, okay, let's get this registration process over with. Flick out my driver's license. They're like, sir, it's not a registration. I'm like, feed that line of bull to somebody else. Now I'm going to preach at you. I bet you support George Bush, don't you? He supports the assault weapons ban. This was a few years ago uh, in McBride's. I was there buying that shotgun to re recreate the Cheney shooting to prove that he shot the guy closer than what he'd said. And the guy's like, ah, if I don't like you saying that Bush uh, supports that. I've heard you. That's not true. And the owner comes over and goes, that's actually true. And the guy's like, huh? But, but the point is, is that it's a lie. It is a registration. But that's a side issue. The central point I'm getting at here, before I go to the top stories in your calls, is that they don't, the, the ATF six months ago, and we got this first from a local gun dealer before it was even in the news, we broke it. The ATF was sending letters and agents, if needed, to local gun shops to say, you are going to report more than one rifle sale to us in writing and with a phone call, or we'll arrest you and take your license, and or both. And, of course, that was outside of law. They just tried to pass a law to do that. They couldn't pass it, so they just said, we'll just do it. We're a criminal enterprise. We'll do it. We're folks that ship drugs into the country and guns out of the country and guns to gangs around the country. That's all come out in Fast and Furious. The mainstream media only covers the upper crust, the upper part of the tip of the iceberg, one snowflake on top. And, actually, mainstream media has covered the drug dealing, but it's Chicago Tribune, El Paso Times, now New York Times, I guess. I, I, I guess they have kind of covered it lately. But it's like, well, they just launder the money and run the drugs to keep track of everything. Of course, you understand the $500 billion that they, they just, they just they, you know, these agents just live in $3 million houses for no reason. I remember being in high school and going over and visiting my buddy whose dad was an FBI agent's house. It was like, you know, fanciest area of Austin. Uh, all these rich people saw some famous people there. And I'm like, what is this? Is your, do you, is your dad inde independently wealthy? They're like, why are you asking those questions? The point is, this is how America runs. And if somebody gets in the way of it, like a cop in Oklahoma City, hey, why are there bombs here? You guys, uh, we know where your daughter goes to school. We'll, we'll, we'll kill your daughter. Another cop by the water cooler, FBI walks over. Um, we're going to kill you and your wife if you keep asking questions. We're the FBI. And everybody's afraid of them. And everybody bows down to them. That's like when the FBI showed up here one time, digging around. I couldn't help it. I mean, I was like a dog in a backyard that sees, you know, a a, 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 a prowler. I couldn't help it. I, I, I puffed up and walked out. I said, what are you doing here? You work for terrorists. I'm good. And, and they just don't know how to deal with that. They, they don't know how to deal with it. I have broken the trance. I know what I'm talking about. I am not putting up with it anymore. And I know most FBI agents are investigating you know, missing people and bank robberies. I know most of you aren't criminals, but most German soldiers weren't killing people either in death camps. I mean, you, you, most Soviets weren't bad people individually, but they followed orders that led to a greater evil. I, I'm really having... I'm going to be honest with you. It's not even shaken up. It is stone cold awake. Which in a land of Looney Tune people that put up with tyranny, I guess I am stone cold crazy. Because last night I could barely eat dinner. I got home about 7.30. My wife had made me this incredible dinner. Made the children wait. I sat down started eating. And she made me this steak with mushrooms all over it. All this stuff. And I could, couldn't even eat it even though it tasted great. Because I was so freaked out by that incredibly incredible police officer who's on record, one of the heroes of Oklahoma City, going into the building, you know, a minute after the explosion, all of it, seeing the feds, all of it, 
And then the, the FBI, two different agents come to him at the police department a week later and say, you keep your mouth shut and don't call for an investigation or we're going to kill you and your wife. And then he goes to, the, to his lieutenant and goes to the chief and they're like, shut up or we'll just have you arrested as a militia person. Maybe you were part of the bombing. I mean, that's basically how America works. And then, they, and then they killed Oklahoma City police and others, tortured them to death. And the police all stood down and got scared. And now, 15 years later, most of the police in the department are awake and freaked out and saying, we're scared. You're scared? I mean, I'm scared of being scared. When I get scared, I get aggressive. You understand? Because I realize there's nowhere to run, folks. There's no country the New World Order hadn't already taken over. There's nowhere to go. And at an instinctive level, when somebody's coming down on me, I get back and get ready and get back in their face. That's the only thing feels good. It's the only thing I can do. God almighty. I mean, can you imagine FBI in the hallway walking over and saying, we're going to kill you and your wife. I mean, that's who runs this country. And of course they do. $500 billion in drug money. You think, you think drug cartels really control that? It's on record. It's the government. Now they've moved into child grabbing. I mean, what? I mean, because, because 50 years ago, it was just the FBI saying La Cosa Nostra didn't exist and taking money from whores and drugs and things. But then once the organized crime starts grabbing kids to sell as sex slaves and the rest of it, how are they going to blow the whistle on it? Because, because the worst of the worst goes to the top and says, hey, you're all involved in crime now. You all took money. So now you're going to be involved in this. You see, that's the thing about evil. It's like stepping off a cliff. You just fall and fall and fall and fall. It is a bottomless pit of evil. And, and our whole society is just going over the edge. And then when you sit there and tell a bank manager, you know what? I just don't like your frantic phone calls because my wife pulled some cash out because you forgot to ask her occupation. It's a private checking account. Uh, go fill out your little federal report. We have to know for the Fed, sir. Just tell us her occupation. I've already told you. It, you know, it, it, it's and then look, don't don't be paranoid, sir. Uh, uh, we're not spying on you. Oh no, you're just calling me up saying you got to fill out a federal report on me. No, you you're not spying on me. You, right, right. Again, and the TSA going down people's pants, including babies. And, and again, it's all a psychological warfare deal. We get the videos and photos of them groping women's breasts, pulling shirts off, stripping old ladies, ripping colostomy bags off old men, taking diapers off babies, men groping small girls. But the TSA said, we're not doing that, we're not doing that, we're not doing that, we're not doing that last year. And then they said, okay, we are doing it. We're going to stop doing it to children. Never stopped. Oh, we're not strip searching old women. We call it something else so it's different. They play these little criminal games with the public that's in a general trance. I mean, if you walked up and shot somebody in the head with a forty-five and said, I didn't shoot you in the head, I gave you a yellow bow. I gave you a pink bow for your hair. I crowned you with a, with a little hat. It's like, oh, well, your brains are all over the ground. There's blood spurting out. But it's not a, it's not a gunshot wound. It's a pink bow. And the cops pull up and you've blown somebody's head off and you say, I didn't blow their head off. I pink bowed. And because you say pink bowed, the cops go, pink bowed, pink bowed, pink bowed. I mean, this is the level of ridiculous, sickening mind control that I have to sit here and watch and deal with and go along with. Okay? It's only going to get worse until people wake up and repent. And by repent, I mean, face what this government's become. Face how more and more you look at the cops on the news and in person and they're all wound up, crazed out of their heads. The police departments encourage them to take steroids. I mean, up, I saw the Fort Worth police chief was in the news saying, you know, we publicly do it. We don't care. You know, just roid raging, whacked out of their brains. And you pull up to these domestic checkpoints now and they're all crazed and wild out. Pull over there, we're going to search you. I'm like, Fourth Amendment, get over there. And they start getting their guns. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's just crazy. It's, a, it's a, some kind of demonic trance. And people have got to come out of it. This is all a program. Do you understand that if you really believe they're real terrorists, it's all about profiling? 
and tracking those certain groups, old-fashioned police work. Of course, it's not about that. So, of course, it's, I used to make the joke, well, you know, uh, more people die a year from champagne corks. You can pull this up uh, than uh, even um, die from being struck by lightning. You can pull that number up. You know, should we have a, a checkpoint around a champagne cork when it's about to be popped? Because the body's pretty fragile. It hits you in the eye, can push the eye back up into the thin part of the skull, cause, cause a subdermal hematoma, or it can hit the temple and do the same thing. And you know, should we have checkpoints all around champagne bottles? You got a better chance to die from a champagne bottle than you do from terrorist. Bee sting, I mean, you, you know the drill. Go look at the numbers. Deer kill like 300 people a year last time I checked, jumping in front of them. But also a few times a year, a buck's rutting and somebody's at a, you know, at a rest stop it usually is. And they just go ahead and kill you. Go ahead and gore you to death. You know, 120 pound buck will kill you. You got to ban deer? You can't ban them. The, the idea of the government's got to keep you safe. And I've got the reports here all over the country now. They're going to what? More than triple the number of Viper teams and their 5 billion funding. And now you're going to have, they're announcing checkpoints randomly. You're driving down the road, small road, country road, big road, farm road, interstate highway, and you pull up and there's guys with dogs and machine guns searching your car with their eyes, with crazed looks at you and your wife, just getting off on the power trip. They go and find people, so-called men, who, who like to run around crazed all day like there's just enemies everywhere. I mean, look at these articles at InfoWars.com. And I'm telling you, folks, I'm getting to the point where I can't handle pulling up to guys in Marine Corps drill sergeant hats and stuff yelling at me and my family. I mean, I just can't take it anymore. I mean, I know stinking, knuckle-dragging tyranny when I see it. I mean, you are the opposite of this country. You are the opposite of freedom. You are anathema to this nation. And why do you think they're getting ready for all this? Because they're going to collapse and kill the country economically. It's going to destroy the futures of all the idiots that work for the system as well. You are literally sticking your arm in a blender with it set on high. And again, because I'm upset by this and I'm conscious and I'm awake, I'm the bad guy. Because I'm offended that all over Texas, cops will ask to search your car and will go in your purse and steal your money. That's supposedly freedom. TSA responsible for 9,000 unannounced checkpoints in last year. And it's got the photo here of the people dressed up in their commando gear. In fact, sh show them this photo, guys. It's up on InfoWars.com. It's TS. We're just zoom in on this. The guy's got tattoos sleeved all over him, which whatever you like tattoos, fine. But just 10 years ago, you know, this is a motorcycle gang, you know, tough guy prison deal. Just a total prison thug culture. There it is. He's got total sleeves on. He's got his sleeves rolled up in black gloves because he's ready for war. He's got his German Shepherd, and they're looking for bombs. This is all part of the mass delusion that they're actually terrorists. And it goes on to say the Viper teams under TSA did 9,000 unannounced checkpoints, including some with the Army with them. Now, here's another one. Look, look at that. They've got MP5 submachine guns here. Heckler and Koch, Congress to fund massive expansion of TSA checkpoints. And, 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 and literally, they search your bags. They, 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 they pull you out of your car, and your kids are there, and they're crying. I've seen this on the news. And, they're, and, and, the, and, and the men have got weird looks on their face like they're drinking the fear of the families and the kids. Listen, it doesn't elicit fear in me. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you something. It makes me want to throw up. You idiots. Look, if you want to be tough guys, go join a boxing gym or jujitsu. Get in the ring with somebody who really wants... No, 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 no. No, you want to intimidate old ladies. I get it. You are little boys, little punks. You're the type of people when you were 16 would beat up 12-year-olds. Okay? I know who you are. I know who you are, and I don't like you. Do you understand that? I don't like you. But your bosses, the social engineers that play you like a fiddle, I absolutely hate your guts. I want to make a point here, and then we're going to your phone calls. And it's this. The public is so ignorant about where food comes from, where electricity comes from, history, the branches of government.
that's how they're able to get away with this. Even the enforcers are, are, are unconscious to much of it. To, you know, to say, let's stop Al-Qaeda, let's randomly go to the middle of West Virginia or the middle of Southern California and just randomly set up a checkpoint on a, on a road like you're going to find a terrorist who's, who's going to get somebody. And out of all these checkpoints, they haven't stopped a, quote, single terrorist. It's just made up. It's pointed at the general public. It's pointed at pickup lists of people they want to arrest to get the general public and everybody acclimated to highway checkpoints and the army running your database to then throw you in the back of an army truck and take you away. And by the way, that's now all admitted. They're preparing for cordoning cities, blockading cities, door-to-door -door gun confiscation. It's all public now. And you notice, all these years I told you, they're gearing up for martial law after they collapse the economy through derivatives fraud. They'll collapse Europe, then Asia, then the United States. And you see it all happening. Because it's a plan. It's a plan. It's a plan. <coughs> Again, to just randomly say, well, we've got $5 billion, but now that's being massively expanded. And uh, we are going to have 25 more Viper teams scattered across the country responsible for manning checkpoints on highways in bus and train terminals and sporting events and even high school prom nights, the L.A. Times reports. Again, why do they have National Guard for a decade? Just at even high school football games searching people. It's to acclimate you and the military and police to accept a takeover. And now they admit, we'll kill citizens, we'll arrest citizens, we'll send the military after you, and you get the training manuals. It's about conservatives, libertarians, Ron Paul supporters, in the fetters, Alex Jones, filmmakers. I mean, they've had the army in plain clothes come out to my rallies before. We were sent the documents from Patriots inside the Pentagon and published it. And, and, and in the manual it says... Down in Houston, don't let Ron Paul at his rally know your military. They may kill you. It actually says they may attack. And when you go to the In the Fed in Dallas and others, and that was when we were at, don't, don't, don't let them know your military in plain clothes surveilling them because they may attack. I mean, imagine with a straight face, Ron Paul may attack. Okay, so, so oh my God, these people say there's foreign banks running us. They're, they're terrorists. Uh, uh, look, at no, no, we're the real Americans that did the research. We know how to save the country. We know where we're going. We know how to turn it around. We're the good guys that say it's not good to have random federal checkpoints. It's not good to have TSA sticking their hands down your daughter's pants. It's not good to be put in radiation machines. It's not good to have asset forfeiture seizure and police taking money out of people's purses and wallets when no drugs are found. Oh, oh. It is so crazy. I, again, it totally freaked me out last night. It really hit me hard again. It really hit me hard. Hearing about the all these cops I've talked to and the Police I've talked to that investigated the murder of other police around Oklahoma City and FBI walking right up to cops and saying, we'll kill your daughter, we'll kill your wife, we'll kill you. I mean, witness after witness I've talked to on air and off air over the years, and it's just so real, so sick, so evil. And they're just building this giant army of thugs and scum. And I guess a lot of these people work for the system, they just like it. They know they're evil. They don't even care if, if, if their own financial future is ruined, as long as they can have some fun. And I think that's what it comes down to. We're just an evil country. A cheesy, demonic, abortion-loving country. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have uh, Ron Paul's campaign, uh, chief campaign advisor, the policy advisor, on the broadcast in the last 20 minutes or so today, Bob Chapman will be joining us. I know we got loaded phone lines, and I've really just been spinning out and ranting because, because it's so obviously corrupt and evil what we're facing. We are still a really great country in so many ways. And I just can't believe what we've turned into. It, 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 it makes me actually become flummoxed.
I mean, I think about this and really accept and grieve. It's in between crying and 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 getting dizzy. I know why people faint sometimes. It's just it's it's the realization. Look, look, you can't just go through life while a bunch of psycho demons that are kidnapping kids and blowing up buildings and stuff are running your country. I mean, you're supposed to be totally freaked out about it. They're real monsters, but they're they're humans. I mean, if they had green skin and fangs, could it get people upset and do something about them? In their minds, they're they're vampires, sadistic, blood wallowing, biological android ticks, giant, two hundred pound, self mobile ticks that blend in with us and are all around us, and spiritually. They are tuned into hell itself, and uh, I can I can pick up on them. I, I've got their total mindset, their wavelength down, and I just, uh, man, I'm like, God, my discernment just gets more and more intense by the day. I just start asking, I mean, how am I, I mean, I just, I can't even look at these people anymore. I, it's not even hatred or disgust anymore. It's just, it's just like, ugh, ugh. And then I don't even have the capacity to fear them. 15, 16 years ago, I get a death threat, I get a little bit scared. I, I can't even worry about defending myself. I can't even be scared any time. I have no, it's like I'm losing my basic humanity. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. I, I just, I just do not like being around these people. All right, let's just go ahead and go to some of your phone calls. Look at it, all the other news. We got a bunch of guests coming up today. Robert in Washington, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Uh, Merry Christmas. Hey, congratulations on winning those Liberty Awards, you and your crew, you know, the, you know, the fine work you did as a filmmaker for the last 17 years. We know you're not in it for the money like some people, like the traders over at the IRN. And I talked to you a couple of times on Dr. Stan, and I brought up the Beyond Treason, and I understand the, the, the reasons about that. But every family should watch Beyond Treason. Have young people learn to watch or get that video online, Beyond Treason. Another quick point I have to, to bring Ron Paul uh, ideas for. Uh, of course, you remember the Obama Joker flyer. What if we had an Obama, or excuse me, and the, uh, Ron Paul wins the presidency? Or so many little different issues. We could do hypothetical ones in the future. Ron Paul can win. Every activist hand these people out. Because I go to a pub sometime and I tell the guy about Ron Paul. And he says, who? Is he one of the main ones? I says, he's the only one. You know, you know the fluoride heads are so ignorant. But what Well, no, you got two different crowds. You got those of us that are awake and getting more awakened and, and more, more informed. And you got those that just watch mainstream TV who literally have no idea what planet they're on. But what about that, Alex? Is that a dumb idea? It's not like trying to boycott the gas station once a year. I think it may have value. If everybody would take these Ron Paul things, like Ron Paul wins the presidency. We've, like, you know, it's in the time warp, in the future, where Ron Paul de defeats Obama. No, exactly. That's how you counter their thing of ignoring Ron Paul or saying he can't win. As you say, Ron Paul has won the presidency. That's a uh, great way. We can even do an article about that and explain how it's counter-propaganda against them in the next paragraph show how it's the opposite of the mind game they're playing and kind of show people the trick that way. Great point. As for the money thing, uh, it is good for us to actually be strong, to be able to defend ourselves. You know, it's been said that I work too much, and I really do. Yeah, you know, I do the nightly news most nights, or one of the other reporters does. I do the radio show, I do all these interviews. We're going to be here this Sunday with a special Christmas transmission. And I tend to get negative and angry. I know there's a lot of good people at every level of society in America is in a lot of trouble, but we're still the best nation on earth. I've been to a lot of other countries. It's just painful to see this, this globalist, artificial culture being forced into every society and to just see corruption rising and to see people sold on thinking you can't fight it. In my experience, when you fight corruption, it parts like the Red Sea in your own little area, but you've got to fight it. You've got to stand up to it. You've got to walk on faith. I mean, you've got to step forward. You've got to say no. you got to say, hey, threaten to kill me all you want or do whatever it is. I'm not going to live in fear. 
And that takes the power away from the enemy. Now, I should be calm. I should just steadfastly face this. But I am an angry person. I can't help it, folks. I've always hated bullies. I've always hated people that hurt little animals. I've all, I'm a big softy. But in that, I am an extremely aggressive person. And it is, it is just, it is torture. It is torture when the families call me every day with their kids being taken. And then I find out it's, it's, it's DynCorp subsidiaries who run open child kidnapping operations worldwide. And it's even in the mainstream news. And they're running the CPS local. And I know they're a bunch of pervs. And I just, it, 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 it's horrible to see the crime continue. And I guess for the rest of the yuppies and everybody, they just go out and have fun and party. And if something happens to them, their friends don't care about them. It's all fake. It's all real shallow. It's not real. and Most of these people aren't real friends. They don't really come through. It, it's, it, it's like delusional. It's, it's not... I'm going to go to your calls. It's just... It, I don't even want to say it shook me up yesterday. But I have passed almost emotional or, or awakening periods in my life. I really like a spiritual threshold. And previously I'd cross them every two or three years and, and would have like this big come to Jesus moment could really feel it and, and, un, and consciously see the area I'm going into and the responsibilities. And then last night, God just showed me so much and I couldn't even talk. And I do not even feel worthy to be here bringing you this information. And I, it just absolutely brought me to a place I've never been to, you know, where God just really says, you want to see the evil? Here it is. Feel it. And to feel what the children are feeling... <laughs> God Almighty. <laughs> Folks, we gotta we gotta get good people to stand up against these people. God. God. I probably shouldn't even have done this radio show today because I have this disgusted cover for how I just hate the globalists, but it's more than that. And I, and I just get flippant and angry, but it's because deep down, folks, I can see what they're doing, and I have, we have a responsibility to stop these globalists. Where are the men in this country? Where are the men in this world? What the hell have we become? We just offer our children up to the system with the fluoride and the water and the GMO hurting them. And we let fat perverts grab them at the airport to train them for the pedophile government. And we've just got such a sick society. You know, I, uh, I don't even want to go to calls and everybody will go, oh, Alex, it's all right. I, and I don't even, this is quite the spectacle. I'll, I'll just tell you this, folks, if you're not upset yet, like the bumper sticker says, you're not paying attention. I grieve for where this country's going to go. This country's going to be destroyed. The globalists, if they have their way, are going to kill millions of people. They're going to run the same type of stuff they did in the Soviet Russia when they broke all the Christian farmers and killed them and starved them and stuff. What they're setting up, I've seen the attack profile, we got all the documents. And because we're a decadent nation who's been beguiled and put into a trance, go ahead and get the interview with Fine. I'm going to air that now. Then I'll go to my guest later. It is unspeakably bad what's going to happen, but it's, it's, it's the law of the universe. If we stand by and let third world people be killed and think it's funny and make jokes about it and think it's sexy to torture people and sexy to have no rights or due process and all these soft, cowardly, domesticated people who are just victims of their own you know, culture sit there and go, well, I have nothing to hide. So what if they can secretly arrest me? It, they, it, it, it is unspeakable where we're going to go. Yeah, cut off my intro. Uh, we have it right up to fine. Yeah, this is from the nightly news last night. We'll play this in this segment. Go to break and play a little bit more of it. 
It's like 30 minutes long. It's up at prisonplanet.tv and it's on the YouTube channel for everybody. You know, I want to come here on the air and, and give you a heartfelt, true, deep analysis. And what happens is I read all these hundreds of news articles and have all this information and then just get so angry by the time I get on air that most of the time I can't even get to much of it because it's so much crazier than I can even say. And we're so accustomed to putting up with evil now. And I just see men and women who've been made weak and, 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 and rendered broke back. And I just, and then the evil just runs wild and does whatever it wants. Who will stand up against the wicked ones? Who will stand up for the children? Who will stand up for the innocents and the widows? Who? Where are you? What is wrong with you as men out there, as police? To hear how almost the entire Oklahoma City Department knows the government, the feds blew it up and they're all scared. What in earth has we've turned into? A demonic country. A demonic world. And if you think things are bad now, we're going over the edge into the abyss right now. And all of you trying to take care of yourselves, all of you only worried about your ego and how you look and what's going on, you're afraid of what your neighbors say. Don't you get when everybody goes along with the evil thinking they'll be left alone? That's what lets the evil take over. Don't you understand that? Let's go to Ron Paul's chief uh, policy advisor, constitutional lawyer, Bruce Fine. Here it is. Bruce, thanks for joining us from D.C. What should we get into first, the giant police state power grab or Ron Paul's counter to it? Well, I think we should get into the power grab first because that really transcends any individual candidate. It's something that's going to come to haunt the United States, uh, not only today, but in the future if we survive as a, as a genuine sovereignty that celebrates the republic. And not only do we have this National Defense Authorization Act that Ron Paul condemned that crowns the military with authority to detain any of us for life in the United States if the president says we're substantially aiding an associated force of the Taliban to attack coalition forces, a totally open-ended uh, standard that now makes all of our liberties at the whim of the president. And, and then we have this continuity in government uh, revelation that we discussed earlier that suspends democracy, suspends the republic in the event of some so-called emergency that the president declares, or whatever standard of emergency is, and basically pits the government against the people. Uh, instead of, uh, that's an, an inversion of what the Constitution is about, which says we the people are sovereign, not the government. The government is the steward of our liberties, not the grantor of our liberties that are unalienable. And we also know from stories uh, recently that we have uh, surveillance drones on the southwest border, the government claiming they can surveil us from uh, the day we step out, the, the moment we step out of the, our house until we, we go back into our bedroom without any probable cause, without any warrants. Uh, that's what's being made uh, as a claim in the United States Supreme Court. We're using predator drones to kill people based upon secret evidence and secret law that the president says he can't disclose. There's no post-mortem. There's no way to hold anyone accountable for these assassinations that you know, remind me of, of, of the Gulag Archipelago, archipelago of Solzhenitsyn uh, you know, during the Soviet days. And it never ends. Always more encroachment on liberty. Always more encroachment on privacy. And the, this, this futile quest for so-called absolute risk-free existence, which is uh, a guarantee of, of simply detaining and, and arresting everyone on the theory that we're not all saints. A truly horrifying... Uh, I think development and the the incredible thing is there's so little resistance. Ron Paul, Rand Paul voted against these kinds of bills in the Senate, uh, but it's really a handful overall. Only 13 senators out of 100 oppose this tyrannical rule. Ron Paul himself, I think, as uh, is, is the one person standing as a beacon there, recognizing and willing, unlike all the other candidates, uh, to argue against uh, this police state uh, that makes a safety as opposed to liberty and freedom. They are the touchstone of the country, even though the, the safety really is an illusion. Because when you create uh, a belief that all citizens are disloyal, it'll create cynicism and a sense that the government then becomes illegitimate. And the greatest strength any country has is the allegiance and loyalty of its people. That's the greatest strength, and not, not the weapons, not well, the that guns, was my... things of that sort. Certainly. I mean, I mean, in the last few decades, the military industrial complex, the big crony capitalist, non-free market megabanks, 
They've tried to keep the velvet glove on the iron fist, but now because Congress for now, what, two years has had a 9% approval rating, uh, even liberals, uh, big government people say they fear big government more than you know the free market and corporations now. So there is an awakening. So I think the system is just dispensing with even the ceremony now. I mean, we were talking about this before we went live here. This was put on the White House website two weeks ago, strategic implementation for plan for empowering local partners to prevent violent extremism in the United States. And it's a federal announcement saying domestic terror is the number one threat and speech criticizing the government. There's bizarre quotes in here. Uh, is 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 aiding terror, and there's a President Obama. All right, we're going to go to break, uh, where he says, and come back with Bruce Fine's answer on the other end. Stay with us. Well, CBS News, after a week of trying to imply that um, Ron Paul wears Hitler underwear and is evil because he comes on this show. Oh yeah, hundreds of articles a day. Uh, Ron Paul's gone up in the polls. And so they're asking the question, Ron Paul, the new Teflon candidate. And that's what they're going to do, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to just keep throwing mud, made up garbage and exaggerated and twisted news. Because they can't beat him in Iowa because it's an actual real voting system where it's done by hand votes and tallied in front of everybody. Now, when he hits black box New Hampshire, that's going to be a different story. But imagine all of Ron Paul's patriotic, anti-New World Order information is now front and center. Resistance is victory. Here's some more of the Bruce Fine interview. We'll get to more of it, too, uh, towards the end of the next hour after Bob Chapman's on with us. We have other guests coming up right now. Here it is. It shows that the Constitution has been vandalized by the government, and they, the government needs to be held accountable. And it turns, I say, the idea of the republic on its head. The glory of a republic is liberty. The individual is the center of our constitutional solar system. In an empire, what we've got today, big government encroaching on all of our liberties is the earmark, and dominion and domination is the so-called glory of an empire. So the, we, we're so far away from the Constitution as it was drafted in and understood and, and celebrated 220 years ago that we might as well be King George III. The President of the United States at present enjoys more authority than King George who we overthrew because of his tyrannical powers in 1776. That is where we are. The Constitution has been so defaced, uh, it's, it's been so warped uh, to just empower the government to encroach and stamp and destroy our liberties. And now when they're suggesting freedom of speech, the freedom to criticize the government, which should be welcome since the government errs so often they need instruction uh, rather than echo chambers, is now being made suspect. And indeed, we had the situation when the Patriot Act was passed shortly after 9-11 where the then Attorney General said anybody who criticized the Patriot Act was aiding and abetting the enemy. You know, it, it's, it's, it's this um, delusion that causes the President Obama to say he doesn't understand why. Uh, people in Afghanistan or Pakistan are trying to kill our soldiers just because we're trying to shoot them, you know? Uh, maybe it's because if we stop shooting them, then they wouldn't be protesting uh, with violence. And maybe if the government obeyed yes. the Constitution, they wouldn't get the extreme speech. And I don't want to suggest that we're at the, the, the precipice of justifying, you know, violent revolution. But we never should forget that in that Declaration of Independence that Thomas Jefferson wrote and all of our founding fathers subscribed to, it says... When a government evinces a consistent train of action that displays an intent to reduce us to vassals, there's not only a right, a duty to change and overthrow the government and to supply a new dispensation that will protect our liberties. And the government's got to recognize you cannot continue to try to oppress all of our opportunities to speak and argue and to display total and complete opposition to what we think are vandalizations of our constitutional rights uh, and expect to retain power. One of the things that I think is most unfortunate because of the historical ways in which it was, in some respects was discredited, we need to go to the impeachment power. You know, Congress needs to stand up to the plate. The members should be impeached themselves if they're not honoring the Constitution and any president of the United States who says that he can use the military to arrest us because he says that he suspects we're substantially able now, Al-Qaeda or Taliban, we don't have a right to rebut it. There's no trial. There's no accusation. We just get to rot. Yeah, why would Congress... Should not stay there.
Why, I, mean, I mean, there's several questions here, but it's all intriguing and, and, and is the big issue of the day. Why would the Congress try to give the president the power of a dictator? But before you go there, Ron Paul, the congressman, the presidential candidate, was on my radio show uh, last uh, Tuesday. And uh, the video of it's gone around the web. It's been seen millions of times. It's, it's radio slash TV. And he said basically what you've said, but, but, but he said the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, establishes martial law in this country. And that's what Jonathan Turley said. That's what basically what you've said. And literally more than 200, if you go to Google News and type in Ron Paul Alex Jones, from that interview, more than 200 newspapers, CBS, ABC TV, basically said Ron Paul's an extremist and, 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 and dangerous, and groups said that's why he's being kicked out of the you know, uh, upcoming debate. We'll be right this back, folks. Stay with us. We have a special guest straight ahead. It's Friday edition. Okay, uh, here is the deal. It is Friday. Uh, sometimes I let the globalist tyranny get me down, but I should be very positive. It's these type of struggles that uh, separate the mice from men. And that give people a chance to decide what they're going to serve, good or evil. It really is a fight between good and evil, as my guest said the other night when I had him on the TV show, Joe Joseph. We're going to him. He works for the Department of Defense uh, in the highly classified uh, areas. We'll just leave it at that. It has a high-level national security clearance. But he pointed out stuff that was, was marked sensitive but was public on DOD bid sites. And about an hour after we went live with it, they jerked it down. But we had saved it by then. Then it deals with the plan for the Red Force versus the rest of the public, military manning the camps, taking over every facet of society. It couldn't be a bigger piece of news. In some of the other news, uh, there's an article out today. It's up at Infowars.com, also DrudgeReport.com. TSA uh, does additional screening for holiday cakes. Uh, sometimes they just take the whole cake and eat it. Other times just cut a slice out. Other times they uh, deem uh, cupcakes security threats and eat them, I guess. We've got all of that uh, craziness going. Also, the head of the IMF urges uh, member states to boost funding, including the United States is giving them money. Uh, Elder Bush has endorsed the globalist Mitt Romney, Mr. Carbon Tax, Mr. Open Border, Mr. Abortion. So, of course, uh, Mr. Rockefeller Republican endorsed him. And the Republican establishment is decrying Ron Paul because he's an actual libertarian constitutionalist, classical conservative. Uh, we've got uh, all of that uh, going on. And in more TSA news, uh, I mentioned this, but it's big. Congress has funded massive expansion of TSA checkpoints all over the country, complete with MP5 submachine guns, uh, dogs, everything. And they, they say they're just going to randomly search you everywhere. I mean, it's if you want to live under a federal dictatorship, well, they're happy to do it for you. Why is all this coming? Because you think the economy's bad now? The New World Order plan is to destroy the economy. Another big report out here uh, that they got studies showing that Americans are scared to fly thanks to TSA. Yeah, I've talked to bus drivers and looked up the numbers. There's more than double the buses being used than there were just 10 years ago. I mean, you drive around the interstate highway, there's just buses everywhere. And uh, feds are like, you think you're going to get away that way? We're going to grope your family there. And I've got articles now where there's more knock and talks, where the feds are with the police, sometimes military, and they say, we're here to look at your guns. And then they just shove their way right in the house in places like Boston. Pull it up. Oh, that can't happen in America. Oh, really? Oh, really? Pentagon gets the go-ahead for offensive cyber wars in the NDAA. Uh, here's that article out of the Associated Press. Desert toting traveler. Thinks TSA takes the cake, and uh, it uh, goes over all of that. Here's another one. We won't have time to play this clip, but it's up at InfoWars.com from CNN. Congresswoman, TSA screeners should stop impersonating federal law enforcement officers. They've got a new uh, piece of legislation called STRIP. That's the thing. A federal marshal, or even the out-of-control FBI, can't go to a park and say, uh, you might be a terrorist, prior constraint, Guilty until proven slave. I'm going to touch your pants on the outside. That's, that's sexual assault. I'm going to go in your pants. That's aggravated assault. But TSA, I've had TSA agents tell me, I'm going to go in your pants now. And I told the guy, okay, go ahead. I'm going to sue you. So he didn't. But uh, he just kind of patted around. And but plus, I wanted to see what they do. And he said, it's my 
administrative privilege and I've had a background check. Well, my goodness. See, we're all guilty. We're all criminals. We're all scum. But the government, they're good. And then you've got them going crazy, raping people, robbing, stealing, uh, every form of craziness, hitting on women, uh, laughing at their naked body scans, lying about the fact that they saved the images, that got confirmed, lying about the radiation level, lying about stripping old ladies. It's a culture of total lying. And, and this is make it or break it. They want to break our will. But you notice their groping is waking everybody up. So this is the, one of the big unifying issues for liberals, conservatives, you name it, where people understand that this is not a good direction that our country is going in, and it's also a giant federal power grab. So we've got those reports. We're going to our guests here in just a moment. Uh, continuing, uh, Bachman campaign lies about Iowa, says that she's tied with Ron Paul, even though she's uh, got 2.77%, and Ron Paul's as high as 30 in some of the polls, and, and rising under attack. See, again, that shows the so-called mainstream media isn't the agenda setters. But they got the black boxes, though. There'll be fraud later, don't worry. Uh, continuing, Paul's position, play well in Iowa, Wall Street Journal. Again, CBS News says he's Teflon. And it goes on and on from that point. Let's go ahead and go to our guest. If you just joined us, Joe Joseph was on with us for about 30 minutes the other night on the nightly TV show, InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock. And it was he and his wife kept sending us emails saying, look at this Department of Defense contract, look at that one. This is all public stuff. But about an hour after our article went up, we did our interview with him at InfoWars.com Wednesday night. It was taken down, the, the documents about the, the military to run and NORTHCOM to run, the continuity of government collapse in the FEMA camps and the Blue Force versus the public. They pulled it and put a message up that we've gotten a subsequent article saying, uh, Department of Defense employees, you're not supposed to upload classified material or even sensitive so I guess the message is, and I haven't talked to J Joseph since then. So Joseph, what do you make of this? Have you had repercussions? Because as you pointed out, you didn't talk about any classified stuff you know, not about the things you're involved in. You as a citizen are allowed to contact a talk radio person and say, hey, do you see this public thing and, 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 and break down how, sub how important it was? And, and, it, and it is big news, obviously. And they pulled it. What do you make of that and what's happened since we talked to you 36 hours ago or so? No, Alex, it, it all comes down to accountability, and that's the only thing that I'm trying to achieve here is to hold these people to account for taking away our liberties and freedoms. I mean, this is, this is ridiculous stuff. And I want to I point out, yeah, they pulled it. I have no idea why they pulled it. It's an open source document, and if you go through FBO.gov, which is a free open source website that the public can go on, much like the CBO. You can go to the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, and go look at all the congressional numbers. All this stuff is open to the public, so it's, it was a bit troubling to me to see that they pulled it down. And now you brought up source selection sensitive, which is on the document, and then next to it, it's FAR 3.104. If you look up FAR 3.104, that has to do with procurement integrity. All that says is there's guidelines that you have to follow as a contracting entity within the federal government to properly put this contract out for bid, probably because it's a uh, umpteen million dollar contract. And I don't even know how much it is. Oh, this but, thing's got to be in the tens of billions, how gargantuan it is. Well, I don't, yeah, see, I don't know. I'm not privy to that kind of information. But I, I'll tell you how I stumbled upon this and, and where it really got me is when you were, you were talking about the KBR um, and the, the reactivation of FEMA camps. And uh, my wife came to me and said, you know, well, this is what Alex is talking about. And he's got some inside documents from KBR. And I says, well, you know, uh, sometimes getting that kind of stuff from a, a contractor is a little shoddy. But any time a contract's been awarded, there has to be a solicitation notice. So let me go look for the solicitation notice. Now, I didn't originally find the solicitation notice for KBR because the first thing that popped up when I searched Department of Homeland Security was this. And I was like, holy smokes, man, this is crazy. And it's first, you know, it's, it's important for the government to have a continuity of government.
plan. Much as it's, it's important for all of us to have a plan to fall back on. Like for yeah, example, this isn't like if a meteorite hits or there's a 12.5 no. earthquake that splits right. the country in two like it's happened before with the Mississippi River. But, but no, this, as you explained, it's right there. This is a battle plan against the people and a total takeover and a suspension of the system. Just as PDD 51 that Bush signed, Obama continued, says Congress is suspended for any reason, including economic. Well, the document in and of itself is only one piece of the puzzle, but it's interesting how they put the entire puzzle out in about one month's time. And it's one sentence in the original document that is that makes it um, that puts it all together. And it says additional efforts of operations division includes geospatial information system, which is like a battlefield awareness type of thing. Blue force situational awareness, that's how you identify friendlies. And command control, communications and computer. These are all warfare terms. So my question is, why for a continuity of government operation are we using battlefield terminology on our own soil? And then if you tie that in with S1867, S 1867 makes America a battlefield. Oh, -ho. well, now we know why that language is in there. It's because they go hand in hand with one another. But when I've had the Marine Corps drills that are on tape, they had 12 years ago red versus blue, and the militias they were practicing fighting in America in the drills, and we have it all on tape, uh, the, the, the Marines of the Blue Force fighting the Red Force. Absolutely right. So, I mean, it's, it's troubling. It's extremely troubling, but it's certainly nothing for people to fear. And that's, that's the one thing that I want to put out. I do this out of a sense of duty. One of my heroes is Martin Luther King. And he once said, you know, cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but he must do it because conscience tells him it is right. And we cannot be silent in these days, folks. It's, this is the time to stand up. I, I know one of the prevailing thoughts when, when you start diving down the rabbit hole is you start to feel alone because anytime you try to approach coworkers, and I know you had uh, active duty military and police calling in and they talk about just how hard it is to, uh, to try and awaken their coworkers, and the, you have to make them feel like they're not alone. 2006 New York Times poll came out where 81% thought that there was something hokey about 9-11. But do you hear that kind of, uh, of, of people speaking out about it? No, because when they go to their moms or their dads or their, their family members or their coworkers, they get looked like they got three heads on their shoulders. And so they be quiet. You know, they, they quiet them down because they don't want to feel like a freak. They care what other people think. And, 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 th and this is my issue. I've reached the point now, even more than before, it's not abnormal that I'm jealous of my liberty, that those are, those are hard fought and hard won. Uh, and, and we need to be aggressive with people when they try to stomp on us because the system is openly trying to break our will and train us to be prisoners. I mean, this is a conscious program. You had probably one of the best interviews last night that I've heard in a long time, and that was with Bruce Fine. And he laid it all out for people as far as what is truly going on. I mean, this is empire. If you look back through history, this is what empires do. This is nothing new. This is just the latest version of empire. So it's up to And he to talked us. about how they want to shut any competition down, any power source, whether it's a big church that even serves them, gun owners, factories, the empires always seek to shut everything down as a control freak measure, as an instinct towards domination. Absolutely right. You know, the American people have shown great restraint through all this. And, you know, the question that I always have is what are the elitist and special interests trying to achieve by this? JFK said it best, those who make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable. What are they trying to do? They want they a violent revolution. It's, it's unbelievable. And just so everybody knows, too, S-1867, or the, the NDAA, has not been signed by President Obama yet. So call the White House. You know, 202-456-1111. Call the White House. Tell them don't sign the bill. You know, flood them with, with, with phone calls. Now, since you came on here, they pulled the document, but, it, but nobody's talked to you at, at the Department of Defense now? No. 
Everything that everything that we're talking about here, Alex. No, is I know. Legal. I like the fact that you're bold and out in the open because you know, this system it's like a mind controlled police and bureaucrats. They act like you're guilty, and and when you like break the trance and go, "Hey, buddy, I'm not a criminal. Stop acting like that. This is America." They'll seem to kind of shake their head. I mean, it's like they've got them in like a, a routine or something. One thing Mr. Fine pointed out yesterday was that uh, people in government do not like accountability. They don't like to be held accountable about things, but that we have to hold their feet to the fire. We have to do that kind of stuff. Public servants serve the people. The people don't serve the servants. It's not that way. It doesn't work that way. They are not slave masters. And people have to understand that over the years, this programming has taken effect to where police officers and government officials and members of Congress feel entitled to this respect that they're not due. I mean, you should be proud that you serve the public, but it's a sacrifice. That's a, it's supposed to be a sacrifice. You're not supposed to profit off it. You're not supposed to have a power grab from it. It's a sacrifice. And that's the way that I feel, and that's what my job, that's when, when I talk about being a veteran or anything like that, it's a sacrifice. You give up years of your life for what? To hopefully keep liberty and freedom for everybody, but what a lot of people are coming to find out, especially in the military, and thank God they're donating in droves to Ron Paul, is that they're, what are they fighting for? You know, RT just came out with a with a uh, with a, a, a news piece that says suicides are are uh, more there are more suicides than there are war deaths now. No, no, it, it is the last number I saw is it's six times. Some numbers were even higher. The, the the former record number. They're having more people commit suicide now than in World War II when there was five to six to seven times the number of people in the military. I mean, people are committing suicide. We're in a depression. The economy's falling apart. Everybody's freaked out. The government and the media, these paid whores, keep telling us everything's fine. And it's just going to get crazier and crazier and crazier from this point. But you know, the good news that you brought forward, and I see it as well, as you were saying, about half the people in the Department of Defense you talk to are really awake now, and, and that those numbers are growing. The other half, 25 percent, are just gung ho and will jump off a cliff if they're told to, and the other 25 just aren't, you know, aren't really that smart, I guess. So that's uh, that's about what I'm seeing. In fact, I found people that are on the inside know that stuff's wrong even more than the general public. Right, but 99, I would say 99 percent. Just like, you know, Occupy Wall Street, that number is very key. Ninety-nine percent of people within government, they just want to go home to their families. You know, whether or not they support the, uh, the policies of, of this dictatorship or um, they are awake and just silent, they just, at the end of the day, they want to be left alone. They don't want to be involved in all this kind of garbage, but... They don't want to exactly stick their necks out either, and that's the problem. We're past the point of, well, am I going to be safe? No, no, you're, you're not going to be safe if you don't say no to this. Did you hear the police officer, and I've talked to a bunch of them, I mean, one of the famous guys that saved a bunch of people, where the FBI said, we'll kill you and your wife if you question Oklahoma City? Absolutely. I mean, it's a shame. I mean, that's the real level of what we're facing. And you know, it's the same FBI, the same crew that did all that. They're in charge again right now. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, that stuff. is so creepy, folks. People are like, well, you better be scared then. No, we better stand up to these people. I mean, they're the same ones that did Fast and Furious to blame our precious Second Amendment. The enemy is in control of the country. Look at this article up at Infowars.com. Genetically modified mosquitoes to be released in the U.S. for the first time. Remember three years ago, we played the clip of a uh, speech that... Uh, Bill Gates gave where he's all invested in this and he released GMO mosquitoes in the audience and they all thought it was funny. That that boils down the mindset of these people. Doing stuff to you you don't know about. Adding stuff to your water, your food. Playing games. Scientific dictatorship. Control freaks. They're coming out with an HIV vaccine that's got all sorts of you know, bad things connected to it and, and the trials and different companies. I mean, we are in a brave new world. They're coming out with food that has vaccine grown in it naturally, pharmacological crops. 
where you can't get away from it. I mean, our naivete is what's empowering this. And we're talking to our guest in this segment, the next, Joe Joseph, uh, Department of Defense, civil servant, Navy veteran, uh, before that. And uh, he's saying a lot of people in the military are awake. You know what shocked me, Joe, was when I had that Oklahoma City uh, police officer, canine unit fellow on, Marine Corps Vietnam veteran, whole nine yards. And he talked about some of his buddies that were murdered by the FBI and uh, all the rest of it. And, I've, and we've talked to other police uh, who also investigated it and were threatened. And, and Department of Defense people who were there, the bomb squad threatened by the feds. Imagine you're a DOD did bomb disposal and the FBI and ATF walk up and go, you're asking about these other bombs? We, your daughter goes to school here. We're going to kill her. I mean, I don't know how people just sit there and take that. I mean, I'm not saying these cops are wimps or whatever. That hasn't happened to me. I, I can just tell you right now, it, it's not even a question of courage. I, I've I got a problem. I mean, I, I people threaten my family. I, I get very aggressive very quickly. And and that's just the way it is. I mean, that's normal. You come up to a mama that's got her baby raccoon and try to get the baby raccoon. I mean, the raccoon will tear a man to pieces or a hunting dog. I mean, it's just any animal defends its young. A rat will do that. And uh, But, I mean, it just shows the evil. But he said, oh, yeah, almost all the police know. Years ago they wouldn't say, but, but now the, almost all of them know the government did it. I mean, here's a whole department of cops standing there knowing the FBI was there and did it with the ATF, and they're all scared of them because they're threatening to kill them. I mean, I, mean, the, the, I, I can't believe that, that, that people bow to such authority when it's obviously evil. Fear is such a paralyzing feeling, and when you when you enter children into the into the mix, especially if you're a parent, it it will almost certainly freeze you in your tracks. And they just but, bombed kids there, so they were letting them know we will kill kids. Yeah, right. Well, see, one thing that gives me strength is my spirituality, and and the fact that that I believe truly that we are just we are caretakers of the children. And they really belong to, to the Creator, to God. And that He's going to take care of them one way or another. You know, you kill them, He's going to take care of them. And I, I'll bet you what goes around comes around. That's just my personal feeling. Oh, that's oh yeah. You know what I mean? What goes around comes around. There's going to be a day when these people, all of these scumbags, have to answer for what they've done. And it may not be today or tomorrow or a year from now, but one day they're going to have to do it. And I, I gain strength and solace from that, just that fact alone. But, you know, one of the things that you have to do when they do that is stand up to them. Put the barrel of the gun on my forehead. You want to know something? You better pull the trigger because if you don't, you're in big trouble. And that's, and that's the way you have to attack this thing is from a standpoint of don't, let them push you around. No, it's no surrender. You have to commit, and that's the end of it. Say, God, it's in your hands. Fire torpedoes. That's right. And if the biggest thing, if there's one thing I can tell everybody today, you are not alone. You're not alone. So don't feel lonely in this fight. That's right. It's a small group of criminals at the top that killed those kids at OKC. That's right. And if we just stop... It's like watching a little bitty chihuahua, even a big dog, it'll dominate them. And the big dog, it's all a mind game. If it ever realized, it's the big dog. It's got teeth an inch long. The little dog has teeth that aren't even a centimeter long. The enemy creates an illusion that we're all alone, but we're not. But those of us that have prominent roles in this fight that are on the front line, we've got to be an example to others. And we will turn the tide against this evil. It's always darkest before the dawn. And finishing up with Joe Joseph, you can watch the full interview with him up at PrisonPlanet.tv. We had him on a few nights ago. Uh, other points about all this coming together, the expansion of domestic checkpoints by the feds, uh, the brigade homeland, the Big Red One coming home, the announcements that troops will be used, that political dissidents will be targeted. I mean, they're really heating it up. They're really flipping the switches on. They are... You know, they've built behind the scenes this grid. Now they're firing it up. Why do you think everything's moving so fast right now? Uh, you know, it, it could be any number of reasons. One thing that I've noticed in, in my short time that I've been researching this stuff is that events never seem to happen the way you envision it or that you, you foresee it. 
it always something out of left field comes out and totally hits you like a like a left hook. Yeah, a bio weapon release, a nuke it could going be off. I mean, look at all these planes that that fly over top of us every day, spraying uh, chemtrails. One day, who who knows? It could be Ebola. It could be anything. And what happens then? I mean, we just go on about our business. Well, like that's nothing. the deal. People are worried about the FBI, and I am blowing up some kids, but but and the, and the ATF. But I mean, this is a government on record saying they want to put stuff in our vaccines and kill us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's just they're pure evil. It could happen in so many different ways, you know. I, and I don't, I, I don't have an answer to that. All I can say is, and I have a little, I have a bit of good, good news actually. Is and the folks at the American Truth Network dot com have engaged uh, Congressman Kucinich. They've talked to him uh, last night, and he's very troubled by this and is looking into it as we speak. So that that is some very very good news on that front because you know Ron Paul's aware of this. He knows what it is, and he called it out just like it is on your show. This is the implementation of martial law in this country. And, I, you know, my, the thing that I want people to understand is, over time, haven't they already instituted it to a certain point? I mean, Viper checkpoints? Are you kidding me? Hey, people are getting arrested for showing their neighbor a silver coin. Cops think it's illegal. In Best Buy, you get arrested if you try to buy something with $2 bills. Yes. Uh, uh, and, 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 you're, and the police come and they're like, they don't even know it's real money, and you go to jail. This is tyranny. That is tyranny at its face. Don't ever let them say, well, you know, we have to do this in order to maintain our freedom. What freedom? Go, look overseas. If you ever get a chance, go overseas. How much more free are we here than they are over there? Well, listen, I talked to Watson and others who he goes to China a few times a year as his wife's Chinese. And he, he says there's no, no checkpoint, no security, no nothing in Ch communist China. No, they're freer than we are. Well, that's because the Chinese will riot. Yeah, well, there's, you know, and there's strength in numbers. That's the other thing, too, you know. This is a very, 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 very small minority of people that are doing this. And we are strong. We're, there are a lot of people in this country. And that's what people don't understand. Well, that's right. This isn't power. 1995 where they can blow up a building and pose as the saviors and try to frame patriots. Um, they had like a 50% approval rating in Congress then. Now it's 9%. I mean, they're done. We are the majority. They're right. done, and that's why they want to start this new war. Le uh, 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 Panetta has come out and said they may go ahead and hit Iran. So now Iran says they're doing a drill to shut down the Strait of Hormuz. Um, I've talked to a lot of military people, and they say that the attack on Iran is going to take place. The question is when. I don't doubt it for a second. I mean, they need the wars to sustain the, uh, the you know, the bankers. The bankers need this. They're hungry for more, which is which is crazy because they've practically looted everything we've got. And it just uh, now it's going to be once the debt becomes so large and so vast, it's going to be like Greece. OK, well, now give us your parks and give us your land and give us your property because we need that as collateral. And they've got all of us trained to tattle on each other and spy and shut down limits stands and Amish. Anything that's underground that can make us self-sufficient, they want to shut down. Joe Joseph, thank you so much for spending time with us. We look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. God bless. Thanks. We'll be right back with Bob Chapman. Stay with us. If you go to InfoWars.com in the featured news area, we have this article I already mentioned, but it's incredible. Genetically modified mosquitoes to be released into the U.S. for the first time. And it's a mosquito G GMO that will actually breed with the mosquitoes and make them sterile, reduce their numbers. Uh, and, and the question is, what will that do getting rid of mosquitoes? You know, already most of the honeybees are dying. Uh, and, I mean, talk about chain reactions. And they admit that some of these are female mosquitoes. That's the gender that bites humans. What is this going to do to humans? And it just goes on and on and on. Uh, the report, again, genetically modified mosquitoes to be released in the U.S. for the first time. And Bill Gates is talking about releasing mosquitoes that have vaccines in them so you have no way to escape it. This is the type of ultra, ultra weirdness going on. Uh, continuing, Genrich labels Ron Paul entire support base as people who want to legalize drugs. You mean like they were before the 30s when they got rid of alcohol prohibition? They needed something new for the mafia and the government to make money off of? So they made all the drugs you could buy at the... Local uh, pharmacy, local drugstore, they made them illegal so they could shut down their competition and make huge profits. And so the drug heads would rob people's houses. 
to pay for the stuff marked up 20, 30 times? I mean, we got more people on drugs, more, more people in prison, government caught everywhere dealing it. I mean, the smart criminals just go join the FBI, ATF, DEA, Border Patrol, Coast Guard, Homeland Security. They just drive in and out in Homeland Security delivering cocaine every day. All the locals know it. All over the coast, they get caught all the time. It just gets shut down. I mean, the government brings the majority of drugs in. It's been in congressional hearings for decades. And there's all these articles attacking Ron Paul. Ron Paul says the CIA deals drugs. He's insane. He said it on Alex Jones's show and others. Uh, 1996, CIA Solicitor General admitted it. You had it in the 70s in Vietnam admitted. You have Mena, Arkansas admitted. You have Fast and Furious admitted. You have the, the, the CIA aircraft full of four tons of pure cocaine crashing. You got Esquire reporting on it. I mean, it's, it's well known. I've had Serpico on. I said, how many, Serpico, of the New York narcotics police were drug dealing? He goes, all of them but me. All of them. All of them. All. A-L-L. All. A-L-L, -L, all. After Serpico, worked, they fired 76% of them. Because he, after they shot him in the face. Oh, and, and, and let me tell you, when the, when the corrupt mafia that has badges and guns kills you, you don't get the big funeral. They even do that. When they kill you, you don't even get the big funeral or the investigation and all that. You're treated like dirt. They don't even play along when your department kills you. Now, all the departments aren't like this, but the system's trying to set it up to that point. But I'll say it again. The globalists know that we're awake, so they're moving fast. Now, Bob Chapman, of course, was the biggest private silver and gold broker until he retired. He also uh, had, of course, the very famous newsletter until he retired. But he's been back in the last decade with the international forecaster. And uh, he's a, a patriot of more than 50 years exposing the globalists. And uh, he joins us every uh, Friday, and he's here with us now today. Well, since we had you on last week, the head of the IMF says we're entering a 1930s-style depression. Uh, Krugman at the New York Times admits we're in a depression. Of course, we've been in one for over three years, as you know. Uh, more and more mainstream media has to admit the uh, unemployment's more like 22, not 9. Uh, crime is exploding. And we've got new giant bailouts, which are really direct taxes to the bankers in Europe. All of this is happening. People are bailing on the stock market again, Bob. Uh, the MF Global has obviously knocked down gold and silver prices because it's totally killed any speculation in the market. Uh, but it hadn't knocked it down as much as some would have thought. MF Global's ongoing. Uh, all of this is happening. And here we are just steering right for an even bigger iceberg. We've already run into three or four. And the establishment saying throw more coal, accelerate towards the iceberg. Uh, I want to get your take on the latest uh, w w with the euro crisis and England refusing to be part of that. And then I want to get into, obviously, I'm sure you've seen all the FEMA documents that listeners pointed us to on official government sites, which they've now pulled, showing the guilty activity, where they admit they're preparing the military to occupy the U.S. and the FEMA camps and use the, quote, blue force military against the red force American citizens. This is huge confirmation do you ever get like a sick feeling, Bob, as it all just gets confirmed in spades, everything that we tracked? I mean, it's disgusting. Bob Chapman. Well, it's not nothing that you and I don't expect, and some of the listeners, uh, to some people, it's shocking. Uh, it's even shocking to us uh, because we go back a number of years investigating this, uh, yourself almost 20 years, and myself over 50. Um, to address the different things you mentioned, uh, for those who don't know, uh, the European Central Bank is going to monetize about uh, $600 billion, and that will be added to about $400 billion that the Bundesbank gave them recently, secretly. And uh, they will be able to buy six months, maybe a year, depending upon how they spend the money, but I think it'll be six months. And then they'll be out there looking for more money. Uh, there's also a swap arrangement between the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank. And what that means is the Fed creates money out of thin air 
and digitally gives it to the European Central Bank, and they supposedly <clears throat> uh, give an equal amount of euros to uh, the Federal Reserve, but I really don't think it works that way. I think it's a one-way street with the Fed giving the money. Uh, how much? Another trillion. Uh, what are the problems? Uh, to take the Six Nations and make them whole enough to go sideways, perhaps for six months to a year, they'd need six trillion. So we, we just talked about two trillion. So uh, that would mean that they need another four before the end of next year. And so it's extending the problem, not facing it, trying to figure out what to do in the interim. And the upshot of all of that in Europe uh, England and the United States will be higher inflation. Uh, how much higher remains to be seen, but it could be substantial. Um, as far as uh, MF is concerned, uh, that's the uh, commodity house that went bankrupt. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm the only one that I know of that said that it was legal to remove anything from a margin account in hypothecation and rehypothecation. Um, it has now been borne out by the SEC in the case of Lehman Holdings, where Lehman's not going to be able, uh, excuse me, where uh, Barclays is not going to be able to keep $3 billion because the judge says, and the SEC agrees correctly, that the UK bank's claim to securities in customers' reserve, which are margin accounts, was conditional. And what they mean by that is that if there's money left over, you guys can have it. But all of the shareholders are going to get paid off first. Now, this is the Lehman deal. The CFTC came back, and <clears throat> Judge Peck, in the case of MF, uh, said the same thing's going to happen. Yeah, but here's and the I'm issue. The here's the it. issue, regardless of that, you, 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 different interpretations of that, Bob, and I'm not saying you're wrong. If you look at this, CMT put out press releases saying it was all guaranteed. And Corzon went and lied and said, I don't know where the money went. And the head of the CMT said, no, I was in the meetings. He's the one that gave the order. So he is caught perjuring himself. And it is you know, uh, uh, fraudulent to raid those accounts and then say he didn't know where it went. Well, if it was intermingling. And we don't know that. And if the money was taken and hypothecated and then rehypothecated to another institution, let's say JP Morgan Chase, then that would have been legal. But if they took it and mixed the assets of the people who have accounts, had accounts, uh, on margin, uh, that would be fraud and a criminal activity. But we don't know that yet. Nobody does. Well, we don't know that because the feds say they don't know how to track money. I mean, you, 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 well, gonna... you and I both know that that is a lie. Oh, it's pure bull. Uh, They're but... trying to gain a time to whitewash this thing. And you know, I can understand why they're doing it. They're all crooks. But the point here is there's been a lot of misinformation. Uh, it's caused people uh, to not to participate in the commodity market, uh, the the COMEX, uh, like they had regularly be doing, been doing. And, and I can understand that. And uh, obviously a lot of them didn't read their contract because every contract is virtually the same. And it says we can hypothecate, rehypothecate, and that's the end of it. And it's been that way for the 50-odd years I've been involved. Bob, we're about to go to break. What do you make of the banks announcing this week that they want extra cash on hand? Uh, the federal government's, uh, the FDIC's t t telling the banks that, and the private Federal Reserve is as well. Uh, what do you make of those moves? I think probably they feel that during the season there'll be more of a demand for dollars. Um, if you go to the bank, and I've heard the story so many times, uh, and wanted to withdraw $8,000 of your funds, uh, they say, sure, I will order it for you and come back in two weeks and get it. Or why do you want to do this? Uh, what are you going to spend the money on? 
and on and on. No, so that happened to my wife different. yesterday. It wasn't even the 10000 amount, you know, where it kicks into the FinCEN deal. And they were just flipping out. You want a few thousand dollars? Oh, my gosh. Uh, or, or you're not with evil, are you? Uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, this whole country, we're like treated like prisoners. A cross between five-year-olds and prisoners. And then there's like gang members festooned with weaponry, dancing around jollily, injecting copious amounts of steroids. Bob Chapman, stay there. And uh, we're going to play some more of that Bruce Fine interview coming up, too. Stay with us. I'm now looking at an article by uh, Kurt Nemo where the media is calling Ron Paul stunted... A stunted idiot because he supports the Constitution. Now they're openly decrying the Constitution. Remember the cover of Newsweek about getting rid of the Constitution? It caused our problems. No, the globalists have gotten rid of the Constitution, and now our problems are just beginning. Now, uh, going back to Bob Chapman uh, here, uh, Bob, uh, you know, here talking to you about the state of the world. Why do you think they're gearing up the FEMA camps, massively expanding TSA checkpoints? Uh, I mean, obviously, that they want to clamp down on the public, but I don't see this working. Uh, and, uh, I mean, there's got to be a method to the madness. I guess the globalists just think they can consolidate total power and control. But, I mean, if I was a globalist and had all this control, I wouldn't want to screw everything up. Uh, but, but I guess it's just their nature, Bob. Well, I give this a lot of thought, and uh, I do think there'll be an election. Uh, some people do think that there might not be. And uh, if Ron Paul uh, runs against uh, Obama, then uh, I think between now and the election, they'll really cool it on picking people up. Uh, but the people that they do pick up will be selected uh, because of their religion and national origin, and that would be Muslims. And, uh, you know, Americans would say, well, who cares about that Muslim over there? And I think they would selectively start doing that during the coming year. And after the election, uh, were Ron Paul to be elected, then uh, a lot of this would be reversed. A lot of things would be re reversed. And you all know that. But if Mr. Obama was then reelected, then they would turn on the faucet because there's no elections in sight and they don't care that much about the congressional elections. And so they would go ahead and start slapping people like Alex and I in jail if they can find us. And uh, that's the way I think they're going to do it. It's going to be <clears throat> imperceptible. Over the next year, and then after that, they'll get serious. Uh, and what will that be based on? A falling economy. Uh, today they came out with figures. People are spending more than they're making, and their wages didn't expand at all uh, over the last quarter. And that's been pretty much the case over the last several years. And uh, more and more people are going to lose their jobs. And uh, unless banks start lending lots of money, the small and medium-sized firms, which create 70% of the jobs. And so that would be the catalyst, higher unemployment. Uh, are they going to expend, extend the extended unemployment beyond the end of February? <clears throat> I don't know, but if they do not, uh, then that could be a cause of trouble. And so I think they're just setting up and getting ready to pick their spots. And you've got the defense secretary saying, we may hit Iran. You've got the Joint Chiefs of Staff chairman two days ago saying, yeah, we're going to probably hit Iran. And then you've got uh, all these reports of uh, different Western-funded terror groups blowing stuff up in Iran. They're really trying to poke them into doing something. And the Iranians are saying, okay, we're going to do another drill of shutting down the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, what do you think about uh, what the West is doing versus the Iranians? Well, I think <laughs> uh, the uh, West is trying to pick a fight, and the Iranians are trying to avoid it uh, because it's lose-lose for them. Uh, but on the other hand, the, uh, the damage they inflict uh, on the United States forces 
as well as the Israelis and as well as Israel, uh, could be substantial. Uh, and will Russia get involved or will China get involved? I can't answer that question. But, uh, and especially with uh, a Russian election coming up, which is not that far away. And so, um, yes, they're going to do something, but I don't know when they're going to do it. I mean, this thing's been dragging on for four years. And so uh, maybe they'll do some other things like pit one Muslim nation against another. Uh, these people have a lot of arguments between each other, even though they share a common religion. And so all is not copacetic, so to well, speak. Well, that's another point. They sell it in the West like every Muslim wants to kill every Westerner or Christian. I mean, those groups hate each other probably, if there is all this hate, ten times more Shiite, Sunni. I mean, it, it, the Saudi Arabians and Iranians, at least governments, absolutely hate each other. Just like Iran and Iraq. I mean, the idea that the Muslims are going to come get us, it's a paper tiger, and Al-Qaeda is Western creative. I got pretty emotional uh, at the uh, start of the last hour when I was just thinking about all the crimes the globalists commit. It, it, it is so staggering for somebody who's not a psychopathic control freak, just a normal person, to discover this and, and, and then to have the paradox of a giant group of sheeple who have no idea what's happening to them versus a tiny group of just really dangerous people who are real live monsters walking around. You hear about monsters in the countryside. I mean, these are humans, but what's in their minds is beyond any fiction you could imagine. Jacking with the food, jacking with the water, official Rockefeller Foundation documents you know, that we put out a year ago, linking right to their site where they're like, yeah, we're developing sterilants in the vaccines and the water and how great it is and cancer viruses and... You learn in the 20s, they discovered that most cancer was viral, and so they pushed vaccines and have it added to it, and uh, cancer's up several thousand percent, diabetes, neurological disorders. I mean, that right there, that out of all the major phosphate mines, they're getting radioactive isotopes along with the fluoride, and that they add it to the water, and that they get off on lowering people's IQs, g giving them degenerative diseases, and you wonder why folks can't get angry. We're poisoned. And then it's real. And then a cop pulls you over and wants to search your car, and you're like, the government puts poison in your water. And they're like, I know, I hear your show. I want to search your car. Well, do you believe me? Yeah, I believe you. I don't. It, it, it's like they're in a trance. It's like, okay, I'm saying this. It's true. <clears throat> what are we going to do about it? Uh, it's so over the top, and, and, and then I'm going to say it again, it, it's good that I can still get really freaked out, because I'm so close to this all the time, I know Bob has been doing it longer than I have fighting tyranny, that you tend to get numb to it. But let me tell you, talking to cops over the phone, military people, police officers over the years, having them on the show, just from Oklahoma City, who pulled up like a minute after and saw the feds running around and lying and saying they'd been in the building, when clearly they hadn't been, and then threatening them and saying, I'll kill you and your family. I mean, that really just totally brings it home that everything we've said and talked about is unfortunately right on target and worse than we can say. I mean, Bob, I'm ranting here, but do you ever just, just get dumbfounded by how far this corruption can go? Well, yes, and that's natural. Uh, and yes, also, I expected things like this to happen because over the years we didn't have the ability to reach the people as we have over the last 15 to 20 years. So, uh, But we have had a chance, and we've done well, but not as well as we could. Um, I had a letter uh, from someone who was leaving Blackwater that said that he'd been recruited uh, to run an internment camp in New Hampshire. And uh, he said that uh, he uh, told the government, no, um, I, I, I don't want to take that. I'm not interested in that assignment. And, um, and he said, I want to protect my family. And so all of the things that we've been hearing about retiring policemen, uh, people coming out of the military, now people from Blackwater uh, are being recruited for 
these kinds of jobs, uh, in this case a leadership position, and other things. So it is real. They are lining this whole thing up. What do we do then? Just get across the true sense of urgency to people and explain this isn't science fiction, ladies and gentlemen. You need to make a decision about what you're going to do. That's right. And you've got to participate. You've got to get Ron Paul elected. Because if you do not, you're doomed. And if you do get him elected, it'll be a hard fight to reverse all of what's gone o down over the past 20 years. I mean, I could, there's a whole litany of things that have to be changed. And uh, I'm sure Ron Paul will go after it right away. And um, I'm sure that as uh, Alex and others have discussed with Ron, uh, he'll be a target. And there's no question. And that's why the vice president is... Uh, such an would be such an important person, and so uh, this is our key. This is our legal key to be able to stop these people. So we got to get Ron Paul and people like him elected. We can make the changes. Yes, they might assassinate him. He knows that, and uh, he doesn't want to leave his family. But he, you know, he's an elderly man, and so he's lived his life. And he's sacrificing himself for the American people. And then I see these people attacking him. I can understand how the CFR and the Trilats and the Bilderbergers and members of the Illuminati attack him. But I see others probably getting paid to attack him. And it's disgusting. Well, I tell you, Ron Paul is really illustrating for the public just how controlled the corporate so-called mainline media is. And all of their tricks aren't working like they used to. So I guess that's why they're moving ahead with the martial law. The criminals that have taken over recognize they're not going to be able to bamboozle us anymore. So they think they're going to fall back uh, on the police state measures. And I guess bring in a bio attack to pose as our saviors and use that as a cover. Uh, or a terror attack or a mix of them. A, a Iran war. What else do you see in that cocktail? It could be anything, and sometimes it's the last thing you think of. I mean, these people spend 24-7 using foundations and uh, think tanks, uh, counterintelligence operations. War game computers, yeah. simulators. Everything you can think of. They have a tremendous advantage over us. We have to wait for them to act, too. we got to stand by and wait for them to blow something up or whatever they're going to do. And then we have to find uh, a path to expose what they've done and at the same time stop what they've done. And so we, we have a very, very difficult job. And we get to be laughed at the whole time. But, you know, that isn't happening anymore, Bob. <laughs> I mean, that 9% well, approval rating for Congress. Know, not that you and I have a kid in the first place. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't mind Two for my... armadillos is what we are, and uh, it's pretty tough for them to pierce our armor. Well, yes, you're right. I don't mind people attacking me personally in a sick way. I enjoy it just because I like the fact that I don't care what they say about me, so it's kind of an exercise in that. And, and, and I get what you're saying. I don't mind being pillory, but you still get hurt at how mindless they are. I mean, it's painful to see people in willful ignorance. Or willfully collecting for doing what they're doing. And we got a lot of that today. Yeah, there are a lot of people that know what's going on. They just think they're going to go along with it and be on the winning team. I think it is important, though, that if we do turn this around, that the people that were involved in it need to be punished. Um, because it's, it's important to send a message to future generations. Well, that's why we have a court system. And if it's not working properly and following the Constitution, well... We'll make it work properly and follow the Constitution. That's all we ask. I mean, if we put them in jail and take their ill-begotten goods away from them and their families and give it to the American Treasury, that would be a good thing. And all those people who need to be convicted of treason should be, and they should be hung or whatever method they get rid of people like that. Well, this hidden treason, I don't know what is. Uh 
You've been talking about the fact that they will bring in QE3. Here's CNBC today. Call for QE. Remember, six, eight months ago, uh, for those that just joined us, the, the Federal Reserve head, Bernanke, Osama bin Bernanke, said he wouldn't do that. So you know they will. Call for QE uh, to stave off euro inflation. The reason it's QE3 is they're saying the Federal Reserve's already contributing, but it's going to be made public soon. What effect will that have? Uh, it'll be monetization and extremely inflationary. Uh, it'll buy them under the current numbers that they're now working with, maybe six months, maybe a year. It's hard to tell. Uh, but there's another facet to this that people don't understand. The Fed is <clears throat> buying assets from the banks. They're buying toxic garbage, which are the bonds that contain mortgages. Uh, they previously bought from American and uh, uh, foreign banks, governments, uh, even corporations, $1.4 trillion worth of that garbage, so to speak. And I think they're on their way already to purchasing 80, 800 a billion to a trillion more. And what will the banks do with that money? They will take it, number one, and buy treasuries and agencies. Those are bonds, which that means Treasury won't have to do it. Uh, <clears throat> and they will also probably start making loans, which they have. They've increased loans to small and medium-sized businesses. And they take the rest of the money and speculate with it, usually leverage around 30 or 40 to 1. Well, I was about to say, that's the number I saw even in the Wall Street Journal a couple of weeks ago. Max Kaiser was pointing it out. We pulled the article up while he was on air. That speculation compared to 2008 when it hit its last height, you know, you know, by October, that that it's something like 30 percent higher than it's ever been. So they're 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 selling more derivatives, more crud than ever. That's right, and there's big profits because there's no collateralization. Uh, it's a pure gambling casino special, and they're the house. They write the things, and. Uh, uh, it, if they're wrong, they got to pay, but they're never wrong. Uh, a good example is the $670 billion worth of derivatives uh, called CDSs, which are credit default swaps, that were written and sold, most of which, in this last six months, to European bankers. So they can't afford to have any of these people go out of business, like Greece, etc. And uh, so that's why the money's coming forth. Don't forget... The Fed's supplying the money. The Fed is owned by the banks that are supplying the insurance, the CDS. The, the whole game is rigged. Well said, uh, Bob Chapman, the international forecaster dot com. If people want to get a free yearly subscription, that's one hundred fifty nine dollar value for free. You can buy a European uh, fifth of an ounce gold coin from Midas Resources already at an extremely low price. And you can get a free membership to the International Forecaster. That's basically the gold at half price. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. Bob Chapman, always great having you with us on Fridays. And uh, Lord willing, as I always say, we'll see you back here next Friday. Well, thank you very much, and thank you all for listening. Bye-bye. Bob, good to have you here. Okay, uh, look, some days I uh, am fired up and focused. Other days I, I get pretty angry. Uh, today, um, I've been all over the map because I intended to come in and take a lot of calls and cover the news. It, it, and I don't want to sit here and whine. It's just disgusting to watch good people not even think about the fact that they have a place in history to shape the world. I mean, I think it comes down to that. Most people I know just think of the mall and the woods, and the highway, and their cars, and their wife, their kids, their husband, as just things, like none of it even matters, and life doesn't mean anything, and they talk about how life's empty.
Life is incredibly full. Full of good, the bad, and the ugly. This is a beautiful country, a beautiful planet. There are so many good people. We're defending the good. We're protecting the good. And that is such a sacred honor. That is such a lofty responsibility. The world is so full of wonderment. And I, myself, am so blessed to even be alive in it. And I have all these countless thoughts and understandings and points I want to make. And I guess there's an underlying frustration. I do a decent job on air overall, but I could do such a better job. And I ask God to help me. And, I, you know, I know over the years, I've never made an ex a secret of the fact that I'm a Christian and have a relationship with God. And a lot of worldly people think that's a funny joke. And I guess that's why they don't have any discernment. But I've never really, you know, sat here and, 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 and pushed my ideas. It's just that. As things get worse and worse, I get closer and closer to God. And as I learn more and more about evil, it's, 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 it's so much more that I know I can even grasp. And when I realize that the general public is basically asleep, I, I just can't imagine what it's like to be totally asleep to this stuff while it's going on all around you. Because we have been eased into this, this bucket of water with the flame under it, this pot, and now the water is just boiling. And every time I see families with innocent, sweet little children, my instincts, my spirit, my soul wants to protect them, wants them to have a great future. Wants, you know, they say the children are like a arrow that you fire from above by the time they're about 13 or 14. You know, you've released the arrow and now it's how you aim it. It's, 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 you know, it's that steady shot and then you release them from the bow and they're free forever out into the universe. And the innocent, it's the innocence of children who are in the garden. They are so innocent. They are so simple. They are so good. And I see them just turned over to the TV, turned over to the culture, turned over to Madison Avenue and being wrecked. And I see what multi-generations of people turned over to this of what they've been turned into. And all I know is we've got to pray for an awakening in this country. And, and, and again, even if you don't believe in spiritual things, meditate on it. I mean, think about it. Sit down in a chair with the music off and the TV off and nobody at home and think about the world for an hour. Think about the things that are going on. I mean, we all know from history books and, and, and the news that checkpoints and military on the streets and political people being arrested and free speech under attack, we know that's the bad countries. And everything that is textbook bad country is now coming here and we're doing it bigger and better the American way. And we know we're, all this isn't being done for security. We know the financial interests that have hijacked this country wrap everything they do in the flag, their whole agenda, and they are funding the terrorists. People say, well, why would the government do that? As a pretext to take over society, to get the no-bid contracts, to secure their criminal gains. I mean, it's so simple. Why do adults even need to have it explained to them? I know you know better than I do. We've got to get this message out to the people that are in a zombie trance state. We've got to wake people up. It's life and death. Speaking of waking people up, the establishment, as you know, has been hyping new Oklahoma City bombings that they say are imminent that will be blamed on domestic groups. Well, if we can uh, expose that crime of 16 years ago, it'll give us a good jump on the global enemies that run this nation. We do have the film, I'm in it, but that's the least of it. You got the retired police officers, uh, survivors of the bombing, others who saw the feds and they're planting the bombs. Uh, the inventor of the neutron bomb saying there were bombs inside. General Parton, the former head of Air Force Weapons Development, talking about bombs inside. It's a noble lie, Oklahoma City, 1995, and I'm excited this is such a big seller because it supports these great filmmakers, but more importantly, it shows people are waking up. So uh, we've got the film, If You Wanted a Noble Lie, available on DVD at Infowars.com, and every order gets a citizen rulebook in it. 
of the terrorist documents, according to FEMA, that found in this country. We also have scientists under attack, genetic engineering and the fe magnetic field of money. Award-winning film breaking down how deadly GMO is. Very important for you and your family or family or others that don't understand how serious GMO is. Also, outside the law, stories from Guantanamo Bay. I want to know what it'll be like in the torture camps for innocent people. They don't take the real terrorists there. They work for the globalist. You can uh, get uh, this DVD at InfoWars.com as well. And uh, if you still want to give a Christmas gift uh, this uh, Christmas, uh, obviously we can't ship it out to you before Christmas now, uh, but uh, you can get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership. We have 15-day free trials. You get to, to see the video of the Slash Radio Show, the nightly news, all my films, almost nine years of material, higher quality podcasts, and so much more at PrisonPlanet.tv. TV. We've got a 15-day free trial. It was so popular, we reinstated it. And you can also get 44% off on a yearly membership right now at prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com. And a little secret is, you, as long as you don't use a username and passcode that you don't mind sharing, six people can log in simultaneously with the same username and passcode. We figured out we can pay for that much bandwidth with the membership we've got. And so uh, all you do is, is you... Uh, Buy yourself a membership, but use an easy-to-remember username and passcode, and then send an e-card to friends and family the night before Christmas or the day of Christmas and say, hey, here's a free membership of this site. Here's your username and passcode. Go watch these films. This is the type of subjects it, it covers, or watch this nightly news show. It's a very professional site. In the nine years, we've upgraded it a lot. Uh, we almost had to cut back letting six different people log in under one name because we had some problems a few months ago because so many people hitting it. But we've upgraded everything. It's working great. Even when the show goes on at 7 o'clock at night, there was some sluggish, just not now. So if you're not a PrisonPlanet.tv member, become one today. Uh, it is thanks to your support that we're able to have the news sites, the films, the nightly news. We're reaching 15 million people in the aggregate every week now, and it's only growing. And uh, certainly at the tip of the spear is a dangerous place to be, but it's more dangerous to just get on our knees and and, and bow to the vampires because uh, they're not going to give us quarter. They're not going to back off, so we got to stand up against them. Also, it is imperative. It, it shows how many people are awake in this country that we're on now over 100 AM and FM stations, uh, XM, Channel 166, and other systems. You can also give people an XM gift. Not too late to go buy that at the store and give it to them with the package that has Channel 166. Or give yourself that gift and I don't know, blare it to the neighbors or whatever. Uh, and you can also support your local AM and FM stations, support their sponsors, spread the word about the stations. Uh, the fact that we're getting on so many stations shows that people are waking up. Hey, I, I get literally hundreds of emails a day that I see and, and calls and comments. And, and I used to think your husband was crazy. People tell my wife at church when I'm not there or on the street or at ballet or whatever, with, you know, with the kids or swim team. Uh, I, they pour in the comments. Oh, my gosh, it's all true. There was a checkpoint with the Army there this week. You know, people are getting it. I was never making any of this up. Unfortunately, it's all real. See you back. Special show this Sunday, 4 to 6. Keep forgetting to plug that. Thank you for listening to GC. A new premiere show this Visit Sunday, 4 to 6 Central on today. Christmas Day. Be sure and join me.